Have you ever wondered what the difference is between masculinity and femininity? Have you ever wondered what these words mean and how do we exude masculinity or femininity? How do we know if we are masculine or feminine? What on earth do these words actually, actually mean? I'm going to break it down so that we can exude them if that's something that we want. Check out this video. Hi, lovely people. It's so nice to see you. Welcome to my couch. My name is Mark. Not Defining is a place where we just chat about lots of things, sexuality, gender, self-confidence, mental health, and all things in between so that you can find your best self however you define. So this question about masculinity and femininity I've always found is an interesting one. We all have an image in our mind about what masculinity and femininity look like, don't we? We all use these words and we say, oh, that person's quite mask or that person's quite firm. And maybe we have a feeling that we possess one or the other or a mixture of the two. But I don't think any of us really, really actually understand what these terms mean. And it can be really difficult for those of us who maybe feel like we don't fit into one of those categories. How do we understand them so that we can know how to fit in or around them? Some of us might think to ourselves, well, it's obvious, Mark, masculinity is to do with men and femininity is to do with women. In fact, if you kind of Google it or look in a dictionary, you will see the definition as you know, masculinity is that which pertains to men. So traits and behaviors that pertain to men and the opposite for women. But that doesn't quite work, actually, does it? If you think about it, we've all been in a situation where we have seen a man who would be described as feminine, right? And we've all seen women who may be described or describe themselves as quite masculine. And so you don't have to be a man to be masculine and you don't have to be a woman to be feminine so there's got to be a bit more than just that doesn't there there's got to be like something else like what is this thing how do we define feminine right here's the thing so when we were cavemen cave people um we basically were like animals and we just didn't wear clothes. We didn't affect our, the way we look. We didn't have language yet to describe ourselves. And so we just kind of roamed around and we would basically have sex with whoever instinctually came into our space and we felt attracted to and whatever. It was very kind of unstructured and as we grew into communities and societies and tribes and stuff like that we realized that it was very beneficial for us to procreate okay so you procreate you have more people you survive important part of life and so people started to create words for the ones who would bear the children, yeah, the ones with wombs, and the ones which would produce the sperm. And so the ones that would produce the sperm, it made sense for them to do certain things, right? So um, they had a bit more time because they didn't have to like be pregnant. And so maybe they could do more of the like defending and hunting or so, something like that 
and then the ones who bore the children, like it was important that they had the time and the space to like bear the children and so on. We all know this. So like, this is where our idea of man and woman comes from. We look to the people who had the traits relevant to both sides of that procreation relationship. And so man and woman are the words that we came up with to describe a sperm producer and a womb haver, basically. Um, that was the thing. Now, it was very important not only to differentiate between those who had the physical attributes which would allow them to play a particular role in the procreation relationship. But it was also important to encourage people, depending on whether they were man or woman, to have particular traits and behaviors, okay, which would help them to perform that role. So the women or the people who could bear children it was encouraged for them to stay in the home, to be nurturing, yeah, gentle, caring, that kind of thing. And in terms of physical traits, the society would kind of favor those womb havers that were young, uh, had good skin, had good teeth, had good hair, you know, maybe had uh, good bodies, they were healthy, and so on. Okay, so this mixture of physical and behavioral traits became known as feminine. Okay, so feminine pertains to those traits in society which other people deem appropriate for childbearing at its base and then of course masculinity pertains to those traits which society perceives appropriate for fathering children so it might be kind of that you have a bit more time because you don't have to carry a child for nine months so you can go out and be more adventurous. You can maybe hunt and protect. Yeah. Um, males will have to compete to procreate because it's much easier for a, a man to, to father a child than it is for a woman because, again, she has to carry it for nine months. So competitiveness, assertiveness, dominance, and that kind of thing. So masculine pertains to those traits, both physical and behavioral. And on top of that, the physical features, uh, which would help you to be a good sperm producer would be um, to have prominent sexual organs, to also perhaps have strong muscles, uh, a large chest, strong arms, to be tall, have a deep voice, yeah, to be assertive. And these will help you in that competition between other males. So masculinity is those behavioral and physical traits which people perceive helpful in being a sperm producer. Now, this is absolutely fine. It's very clear that that was important in many societies and there's no problem with it the problem comes where we get to the stage that we are now in society where people take these words like masculine and feminine and they believe that everybody has to be like that um actually in the natural world you will find that in most animal communities it's not everyone that procreates and there are only a few alphas who are really feminine and really masculine. Actually, most other animals will 
perform a variety of roles. If you haven't checked out my video on LGBT in nature, then check it out. If you like this content, then please click subscribe because I talk about all of this a lot. We delve into really what all of these terms mean, sexuality, gender, gender presentation and so on. So please come and join us. So we feel like in society that everyone needs to be masculine, everyone needs to be feminine. This is not true. The second thing is we've lost all concept of what these terms actually mean. We grow up with boys being like, you need to be masculine and girls being pressured to be very feminine. And no one actually knows why we do it. We're just on autopilot and we favor women who have these like unattainable bodies and, you know, behave in this very kind of meek and gentle way. And men who are tough and all the rest of it. And actually we've forgotten that the only reason we did this in the first place was because early communities needed to procreate and needed to differentiate, you know, between the roles. We are modern, intelligent human beings now. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that so much. And there are so many different roles and so many different um, behaviours that you can have. The other thing that I really want you to remember is that <laughs> you can definitely procreate if you want to without having these kind of extreme masculine and feminine traits, particularly in our modern day, but it's always been the case, is that, you know, if you have a body which is physically able to procreate with the opposite sex, then you could do that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to be this macho guy. You don't have to be this super feminine woman. Like, even gay people, you know, would normally have a body that's physically able to procreate. Like, we don't have to be in these two categories. It's just this wild, old-fashioned form of, like natural selection mentality that still persists today. So, masculinity really at its base is just the behaviours and the physical traits generally associated with procreation and being that sperm producer, femininity about being the child bearer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please share it with someone else who you think would benefit from it. And please hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos. Thank you so much for watching and please write in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day. Bye for now.